Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about a new book. Uh, this book is J.C. Ryle's book, Holiness. And so uh, the, our topic then for the next several videos will be uh, this book. And we are reading an abridged version of this book. So if you have the full version, I believe it has something like 20 chapters. And we're going to read an abridged version that just has 10 chapters. Uh, this first chapter, though, is uh, the topic is sin. And so that's, that's the topic of this video, understanding sin. And what Ryle uh, wants us to understand is that if you want to understand holiness, you must first understand sin. In fact, you have to understand sin in order to be saved. There's lots of reasons why you would need to understand uh, sin. But in particular, a low view of sin keeps you from being very holy because you don't you don't really see there's a lot of sin to avoid, a lot of sin to get away from, a lot of sin to put put behind you, and you won't become very holy if you don't have a good uh, idea of what sin is. Ryle then helps us in this way. He says, to help us understand what sin is, sin consists in doing, saying, thinking, or imagining anything that is not in perfect conformity with the mind and law of God, right? So, uh, God then becomes the standard by which we measure whether or not something is sin or not sin, right? God is the measure of right and wrong. And when we depart from what uh, God says, uh, when we depart from what God says, uh, uh, especially with the things that God say, says is right, is to venture on into sin. And so there's many ways, there's many things that he sort of covered here briefly. Uh, there's, there's at least, there's more than one way to sin. You can sin either by omission or commission. You can, uh, omission means you fail to do the things the Lord calls you to do. Like uh, he tells you to love your neighbor as yourself and you just sort of fail to do that. Or you can commit a sin, commission. You can, you can lie when he tells you to not lie. You, you will in fact lie. And so when you commit uh, this sin, uh, doing this thing the Lord says to not do, you you sin in this way. So uh, that's uh, some ways to think about sin. As a matter of fact, though, it's even broader than that. Uh, you can sin without even knowing it, right? You cannot know God's word. You may not know that God wants you to do this or doesn't want you to do that. And by not knowing it, you can, uh, in, in a sense, you can ignorantly sin, but it's still a sin. Uh, and you have to know then, and this brings us all back to this, you have to know God and God's word, right? And let that be the standard, uh, what God says. Not just, well, I, I like to think this way. I think this is a sin. I think this is not a sin. We are not the standard God is, and therefore uh, we need to not let uh, our own ways of thinking about things uh, dictate uh, what we think is right and wrong. But again, let God have his way and recognize that God himself uh, determines what is right and wrong. So, so sin, though, is not just a rejection of God's ways, right? It's actually rejection of God. Uh, so we reject uh, what, he, he claims to be God, he claims to be Lord, he claims to be master, and we say, I don't want a master. Uh, I'll be the master. Uh, I'll decide uh, what I'm going to do, and I'll decide whether or not I worship you <laughs> as God, as Lord, or not. And so uh, you, you're getting a, a picture here, here then of what sin is like and what it's about. Uh, by nature, though, uh, the Bible tells us that we are sinners and that we are spiritually dead, right? We don't know God. We don't love God. We don't fear God as we should. And in so many ways, we uh, uh, prove ourselves to be sinners. Now, uh, what we uh, want to say, though, and we're moving in the direction now of not just knowing sin, but, but heading toward holiness, uh, after salvation, uh, we still sin. Uh, Ryle says, sin still cleaves to a man, right? So, so after salvation, sin it no longer has dominion over you. You're not a slave to sin anymore, right? Sin is, as it were, mortified and crucified by an expulsive power of the new principle of grace. So this is Ryle's way of describing the Lord, uh, you know, puts a new impulse in us. We want to live God's way, and, and that begins to drive out uh, the part of us that doesn't want to live God's way. But, but you know, the rest of your life, you're still going to be characterized by one who both sometimes actually wants to sin, and, and in many ways, though, doesn't want to sin. And, and, and your life as a Christian will be characterized by a struggle to not sin. And yet, that struggle should, as in a sense, be part of your daily experience, right? And in all of this, though, as you sort of, okay, I, I turned my focus onto sin and I'm, I'm trying to not sin, in all of this, your confidence should always be in Jesus, right? Not in your battling sin, but in Jesus, right? He's the one 
who has uh, forgiven our sins uh, by his work outside of us. And he is the one who, by his work in us, can give us the victory. So, so don't take your eyes off Jesus and look at sin and try to battle it in your own power, but rather continue to return to Jesus and trust in him completely that by his help you will put uh, sin to death. And uh, the fact then that we're getting at here is that uh, only Jesus can uh, show us uh, really how awful sin is. And really, when we think about Jesus, that's when we really get sort of the big picture, uh, a, a bigger understanding of uh, how sinful sin really is. Uh, Ryle says, no proof of the sinfulness of sin, after all, is so overwhelming and unanswerable as the cross and passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the whole doctrine of his substitution and atonement, terrible black, must be that uh, for which nothing but the blood of the Son of God could make satisfaction, right? Our sin must be terribly bad if Jesus had to die in order to forgive it, right? And so uh, we need, and one of the ways to help us on the way to holiness is to really grasp how bad, how wicked our sin is. Uh, one of the ways that sin deceives us is that sin uh, tries to convince us <laughs> that it's really not that big of a deal, Right? And we regularly regard sin as less sinful and dangerous than God regards it. God regards it as quite sinful, quite dangerous. We think, oh, maybe not so much. And that's part of the problem. Right? And only when we begin to take God's view on this, it is wicked, it is dangerous, uh, then we will be, as it were, on the right path toward holiness. What Ryle urges us then to heed Mark, uh, the, the, the words of Jesus in Mark 14, 38, watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. We need to be on guard lest we fall into temptation to sin. Ralph urges us then to not be afraid though, right? To look at the remaining sin that is in you, right? Just do it as one who is trusting in the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? So, so look at your sin, but don't say, well, I know I'm fine because I'm not doing these things. <laughs> uh, no, uh, look at your sin and say, there's sin here, but I am fine because Jesus has saved me. Right? Jesus has done what it takes to make me right with God. And now I'm going to draw near to Jesus for salvation. And I'm going to draw near to Jesus so that he will help me. But as I abide in him, he will strengthen me uh, to uh, produce in me actually the fruit of holiness. Right? But all of this depends on God. Right? God has to save us. Uh, he has to help us understand sin and battle sin. Uh, God has to work in us by the Spirit to produce in us uh, what we might say is the holiness without which we will not see God. So, so we need holiness, but we must look to the Lord to provide that holiness for us. And that's the direction uh, we want to head in this book.